Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Today's video, we're going to be discussing the seven things that you need to prepare now for 2021. Now, this could be a little touchy for some people and should be quite informative for others. So take this with a grain of salt and maybe it can help you out in preparing for this upcoming year. Now we're going to start these off in no particular order. So right now, number one, natural disasters. Okay, we all know that every year, at some point in time, given anywhere in the United States or wherever you may live, you're going to have to deal with some type of a natural disaster. The chances of that actually really taking place and happening are a lot greater than anything else as far as a nuclear war, an EMP, and all this other kind of stuff. Can those things happen? Yes, they can. But you're more likely to run into a natural disaster, or I should say, it'll run into you, and you need to be prepared for those types of situations. Now, there's a lot that goes into being prepared for natural disasters. You need to make sure that you have food, water, emergency supplies, emergency equipment, different types of gear, survival gear, battery banks, maybe some solar panels, that type of stuff. A way to cook in case of power outages, long-term power outages, so that you have some way to charge your cell phone, charge your radios, your flashlights, those type of things. You just never know what's going to take place with a natural disaster. Being said, natural disasters are probably one of the most common things that more than likely 80% of Americans will have to deal with at one point in time during the year. Whether it be hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, ice storms, blizzards, you name it, it can happen. And it happens on a daily basis in some way, shape, or form all over. Not everything at once, but you get what I'm saying. There's always something that is going on. Icy roads. There's snow. Right now it's wintertime. You got a lot of snow in some areas. Sometimes people get one, two, three, three feet of snow in one shot. You got to be able to deal with that. So natural disasters is a big part of your planning for 2021. Number two, mental health. With the given crisis that's been going on that we've already gone through in 2020 that is carrying on into 2021, the mental health part of the whole situation with the Charlie Victor 19 and everything that's going on in this country the mental health part is really tough and really hard on a lot of people. The way you prepare for your mental health is you got to make sure that you have people that you can reach out to, talk to, friends, close friends, family members, and every anybody that you feel comfortable confiding in to talk to them about what is going on. And if things get that bad, maybe you need to seek out medical help or whatever before it gets too bad because the mental part of everything that's going on can break people down really really quick so mental health is a number one thing that you need to prepare for in 2021 number three bankruptcies now you ask why do i bring up bankruptcies with the whole given part of the total money crisis that is going on in this country, it's only a matter of time before people have no other alternative than to turn to bankruptcy. Let's face it, the food crisis that's going on, people don't have money for food. 
people have lost their jobs. They're on unemployment. Their money for their uh, extra unemployment has ran out. I believe they just kicked that back in, but for how long? You're trying to make your mortgage payments. You're trying to make your rent payments. You're trying to live and survive, especially if you weren't prepared for this type of situation, which in all reality, if you think about it, most people weren't. They were all caught off guard. You have drained your savings accounts. Your checking accounts are empty. Any extra money that you had put anywhere uh, your 401ks and things of that nature, more than likely you have drained those too if you have not been able to find work because of the job market. The unemployment rate is high. The amount of money that we're in debt in the federal government, which right now it's like $27 trillion, it's some ungodly figure, that, you know, eventually will have to be paid back by somebody. The chances of you being evicted, using your credit cards, running up every credit card you have to try to make ends meet, keep a roof over your head and everything else. And then what do you do when those bills come in? Eventually, you're going to have a couple of choices. You're either going to struggle and you're going to go through that whole thing for years to come or you're going to turn around and basically file bankruptcy to try to get out from underneath everything. Now, they already have stated that the bankruptcy rates have skyrocketed because this has already taken place. So it may be something that you may have to prepare yourself for in 2021, depending on your situation and what takes place over the next few months. What are we up to? Number four, rise in crime. Now, rise in crime is all going along with everything else that's going on throughout the country. Unemployment rate, people out of work, people don't have food. Some people don't have a roof over their head. They're living out of the cars. They're living in tents in the woods. Everything. You got the Charlie Victor 19 going on. Everything that is going on all comes back around, especially if you, if you live in a highly populated area. More of your big cities, the crime rates have gone up because people will do drastic things in drastic times. It's a fact. When people get hungry, and if they have a family, and they're hungry too, people that normally wouldn't do anything, that are pretty, you know, cut and dry, good citizens, no problems, never had a police record, never been arrested, Hell, you didn't even get a speeding ticket. You will take drastic measures to try to make sure that you have something for your family, a roof over their head, um, whatever it may be, food on the table. So the rise in crime is going up. The rise of shoplifting in a lot of stores, especially in the big cities, has skyrocketed. They basically have police by the front doors in some areas, checking people's receipts, making sure that they're paying for everything and everything else. So the rise of crime is going up and it's going up in all different types of areas, areas that were normally really good. Now the crime rate's going up. People are going to move into areas where they know they can get basically more bang for their buck. Number five, shutdowns and unemployment. Now, <clears throat> we all know what happened after uh, March of last year when uh, Charlie Victor 19 came through town and they started with shutdowns. Now they've started with shutdowns again in certain parts of this country. 
Will that actually take place again? Will it be a, another whole total shutdown? Who knows? Okay. This is why I'm doing this video. So you prepare yourself in case something like that happens. The unemployment rate is, it's like, it seems one month it does good, the next month it does really bad. We're coming out of the Christmas season. So you're gonna start seeing a lot of employers that employed employees for the Christmas holiday are gonna start letting those people go. So all those thousands of people are going to be going back on unemployment again because the jobs that they've been doing, they're no longer needed. They're called temporary workers, which means it's a temporary job. When they're done with you, they let you go. You're not a full-time permanent employee of that company. So the unemployment rate's bound to go up over the next month or so, once this starts taking place. When the unemployment rate and everything starts going back up, and if there are more shutdowns where people are out of work again, no fault of their own, you have to make sure that if you are working now and you're able to, you start building a backup plan of some kind. Make sure that you're putting maybe a little money away for food. If you don't have the money, um, try to figure out a way that you can. Try to see if there's any way possible that you can build at least a two-week emergency supply of food. Just on the chance that something happens and you're a temporary worker, you get laid off. It's going to take you time to get an unemployment check. And how much is that unemployment check going to be? Because now you still have to worry about the roof over your head and keeping the power on or putting fuel oil in your oil tank because it's winter time and you don't want to freeze to death. So the shutdowns and the unemployment are kind of go hand in hand and they can come back around and really bite people in the rear end if you get what I'm saying and it can come unexpectedly at any given time. You may show up to work one day and they just may say, today is your last day. After today, we no longer need you. Now you're out of a job. Now what do you do? So you need to prepare for that. If you're in that type of situation and you have a temporary job. Moving on down the line. Number six, the hunger crisis. Now, the hunger crisis has been going on since um, the shutdowns and everything else started in March of last year when Charlie Victor 19 came to town and everything just went crazy. Okay. The hunger crisis was a major thing that took place when people weren't prepared. Now, when you want to be prepared for a hunger crisis, if you have an idea that something like that is going to come along, I would suggest if you are working and you have a job, you want to make sure that you're putting food up on the chance that something major does happen between now and to the end of the year. There's so many people that are waiting in these lines for food from food banks. It is just on believable. Now we haven't seen a lot of that in the news either, but it's still happening. And the food banks are starting to run short on their foods. A lot of places where they did get their donations and stuff, they're pretty much not donating anymore. So what's happening is, is they have a limited amount of food to hand out to the people that need the food. If you get what I'm saying, <clears throat> excuse me. So the hunger crisis is just going to keep going on until we can get the unemployment rate down and get past any type of shutdowns that may come from Charlie Victor 19. It's something we have to deal with. It's something that 
we're not used to dealing with as Americans. Because this is America. This doesn't happen here. But it does now. And it has happened. We saw how all the grocery stores went empty. We saw what that was like. We saw people fighting over everything. Looked like, you know, Black Friday sales. Only it's fighting over food. They could care less about TVs at that point. They wanted that last can of beans sitting on the shelf. That's why you need to prepare. That's why you need to be prepared and have a plan and have extra food in your house in case of an emergency type situation. Number seven, the housing and security that's going to take place. Now, if you're in a house, you're not working and you're, you're not getting by, you've run up all your credit cards and everything else, your best bet is to try to find some place else to live before they come and just basically throw you out in the street because the eviction notices and everything else have started all back up. One thing you can try to do is try to stay ahead of the situation. <clears throat> so say you were able to keep your head above water and all of a sudden now the boat's taking on more water than you can handle to bail. Maybe it's a good time to get out of your situation and maybe try to find some place that you can afford that's cheaper being on either unemployment or if you're uh, living off of your 401k, your savings or anything else, you know, get out before it's too late. Because once all the money is gone and everything else, trying to find another place with no money isn't going to work. And you don't want to end up living in your car or in a tent in the woods. You know, we all talk about as preppers, you know, making sure that you have a bug out bag and things of this nature in case that you ever had to, you know, hit the woods for whatever reason. But in reality, the chances of most people surviving in the wilderness for longer than say 30 days is very slim to none. They're going to stick to the major cities. Just a fact of life. Think about it. Ask yourself, could I survive? Could you? It'll be tough. It's not going to be luxury. You're going to have some cold nights. You're going to have some days when it's going to be raining or snowing and everything else. It's just going to be miserable. And unless you really have all the tools and the capability to build yourself a wooden log cabin somewhere, well, you're pretty much up Shit's Creek if you're going to go that route. So my suggestion with the whole housing insecurity, I see on a daily basis where houses are, you know, foreclosed on people. I see eviction notices on people's doors and everything else. So before it gets to that point, try to make a decision and try to get to someplace else that you can afford with what limited funds maybe you do have left. I'm going to throw one more in there. <clears throat> and uh, I know this is a whole touchy subject, but I'm going to throw it in there anyways. Charlie Victor 19. The pandemic. Okay, now they've come out with the vaccinations. And the vaccinations seem to be going well. Doesn't seem to be a lot of people that have had major reactions to them, which is a beautiful thing. The problem being is, is they believe that, you know, by the end of this coming year, they'll have over 40 million doses of this available. Now, problem being with the Pfizer and the Madura is uh, you need two shots of those. So if you take 40 million, it's actually 20 million because you have to have the second shot within a certain time period because even according to the CDC and the top government officials, you have to have that other shot within that certain time period in order for this whole thing to work. So we still have to deal with the whole spreading of Charlie Victor 19 
and the way that it's out of control in a lot of different areas. The way it's being spread is through from what the CDC says and the government officials is through the air. You can't get it by touching somebody or something like that. The only way you can get it is say if you touch somebody and you touched your eye, nose, or mouth, that can transmit it to yourself. That's why they tell you to make sure that you wash your hands. Now the next statement a lot of people disagree with, and this is just information. So you do with it what you wish, however you see fit. But they also do recommend that if you're going to go out into public and you may have close contact with other people to wear a mask. Like I said, I'm just telling you what is being advised by the government, the CDC, and most, if not all, healthcare workers and doctors. You do it through your choice. I'm not telling you to wear a mask. I'm simply giving you the information. What you do with it, is your choice. But maybe, just maybe, somehow or another, we have to get this under control. Now, if other people have other ideas on the way to get this all under control and to stop the spread, put it in the comments below. If you have any ideas or if you've thought about anything as far as natural disasters, if you have something that may help somebody prepare for nat natural disasters, put it in the comments below. If you have some way, or maybe you know of some website or links or something like that, say on mental health or the housing insecurity, put it in the comments below. Help everybody out. If anything that I talked about, if you have any information on that, put it in the comments below. Because we have to stick together, folks. It's the only way the boat stays afloat. So this has been the seven things, plus the one bonus that more than likely most people won't like. But it's reality, and it's the truth, and we're living it right now. So, till next time, I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I hope you all get prepared for whatever may be coming in 2021, because I'm sure out of everything that I listed, something will affect you and your family at some given point in time this coming year. I hope everybody stays safe. Everybody keep prepping. And until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.